hope for grace to trust in more. Thank God so much for our Father. He has brought us and may his peace be, peace be with you all. We are still here to know God through his word. May the Lord bless all of you who are, who are trying to know him systematically. Those that have subscribed and those who are following on the Facebook. God stated through Prophet Hosea that his people, his own people, are destroyed from the lack of knowledge. Because of the knowledge that they lack, even though they have become his people, but they are going to be perished. He let us know the reason. The reason is that they rejected that knowledge. Last week, our last video, we let you know the reason why they rejected it. It's because of the impulses. Those that have introduced themselves to them as men of God, people that have been sent by God to deliver the knowledge that they need. And so they don't have the knowledge, they have embraced them, they have accepted them, that these are the men of God. So we let you know how you'll be able to identify the men of God. By their fruit you shall know them. Their function, the work they do, the type of teachings they are giving. If you are serious and you, if you have been following me, you should be knowing them by now. So that problem is solved. Today, the topic is the reason the, prob the problem of Christian lack of knowledge also lacks solution. The reason why it also lacks solution. The first one was because of the ministers that have introduced themselves to the people. That they too have been sent by God. To do something different. They never know. The believers never know that the man God has sent speak the truth. And uh, their disciples or their junior ministers follow them with the same sermon or with the same belief or uh, doctrine. The only problem we are also having is the three word ministration. When Christ came, he devoted to the teachings, and the teachings was not yielding good result. So somebody asked him if he only want or needed only few people. The reason is that you had two ministry, ministries, miracle and teachings. The miracle pull people or draw people to him. The teachings send them out. So if you want more people, you will do what they want so that they will come in their numbers. But to Christ, if you come and you don't have the teachings, Remember the book of Hosea has already said a long time before he was born that the reason why the people that have come to him are perishing is that they lack knowledge. So as long as you lack knowledge, even if you are apostle or pope, you cannot make it. So when he went out, he was able to get a lot of people. He began teaching them that I am coming to teach you. If you hold on to these teachings, you'll be my disciples. 
you really want the, the, the disciples indeed and you will know the truth and that truth is what will set you free not what you had that brought you what you had that brought you is the gospel so tonight uh, this morning i want to share with you the three words of ministration the three word ministration the three of them you have three of them whenever anybody is giving you the message the good news or the word of god uh -huh, that is the right word whenever anybody is giving you the man uh, the word of god whether it is at church wherever it is or in person that word of god is either of these three it's one of these three the first one is the gospel and the gospel is for god so love the word you remember that message right john chapter 10, 3 verse 16. so the gospel reveal the love of christ to unbelievers so that they will come to him in their numbers so the gospel is the preacher goes outside the temple and preach Christ, reveal Christ, who Christ is, how good it is, how important for them to come to Christ. So whatever method and whatever word the person will be able to explain, when that person accepts the message, then that person comes to Christ. So in my note, I said gospel produces salvation or it produces believers. It produces Christian. That is the work of the gospel. The gospel helps believers to receive salvation. So when you receive salvation, you have become a child of God. And since you have become a child of God, you are one of the people of God that are destroyed or perishing from the lack of knowledge. You lack so many things and you have come. So since you have come and you have been granted salvation, it has paved way for you to be able to know the truth which led to salvation, uh, to the kingdom of God. The gospel gives salvation. The salvation helps the believer to know the truth. The, believe, the people out there who are not believers, people who are not believers, they might not, they don't even have time for the truth. So unless you come inside, so when you come inside, then you have received salvation. And for that matter, you have got access. That is the point that it will be possible for you Either you go to heaven or you go to hell. But when you are without Christ, you don't have the chance or you don't know you don't even have the hope. There is nothing in your mind of heaven. Why? Because you don't have Christ. When you have Christ, that is where you have come to a point that you can escape hell. Or you can still enjoy Christ and still go there. Because having Christ doesn't mean you have reached there. Let me take you to my first reading for this point. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, 11 to 13. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13. Therefore, remember that formerly when you were Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done in the body by human hands. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigner to the covenant of the promise, without hope. What I was telling you now. Remember, some times ago, the time that you have not believed in Jesus, you did you were separated from Christ. You did not have any relationship with Christ. So you were without God, without hope, 
there was no promise for you in this world. So he said, you were without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So dearly beloved, the imposters has, or have already told you that once you have received salvation, nothing can take it away from you and you are going to heaven. That point is true and false. What is true is that as long as you have received salvation on this earth, nothing, no amount of sin take away salvation. Even if you become gay and you have believed in Jesus and you have salvation, gay will not take your salvation away from you. Fornication, adultery, murder, and nothing in this world, there is no amount of sin that can take the salvation away from you. Salvation is free of charge and is forever, as long as you live. But as to that salvation can take you to heaven, is how, that is where you are going to begin working on it. That is why, beloved, that is why you go to church. Other than that, everybody can stay home. I've been saved. I believe in Jesus. I have attended to church service. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. So I have my salvation. So going to church, paying tithe convention is not necessary. I don't have that kind of time. Once I have salvation, I'm going to heaven. How many people? These, these believers, I don't know what, they, what is wrong with them. That is why in some churches, so there are some believers, they come to church only on 31st what night. Even though they are tight and offering you to come regularly, but for their person. No. Why? The reason is that they have been saved. And once saved, it's forever saved. Remember the women, right? And uh -huh, the ladies. They say, once saved, it's forever saved. Once saved, it's forever saved. That is what their pastor told them. <laughs> This passage I just read let you know that you have come near, very close to the point. Where is my diagram? Let me see if I'll get it for you. <sighs> gospel. For God so loved the world. This is the word controlled by Satan. You are here. The gospel man, for God so loved the world is here. You know, the Christian you to come into the world to preach to you. When you accept Jesus Christ, you'll be taken away into Christ. You have become a new creation, born again in Christ Jesus, the teachings area where you are going to be taught of the word of God. You are going to be provided the knowledge that you need to know. If you refuse or fail to get the correct knowledge that you need, your life will continue to be as if you were still here. There might be only few changes. And the devil will use other words here and give it to you, which indicate you are walking through the broad road. The broad road is here, even though you have come here, the moment you come into Christ, that is where you have got a chance to walk through either the small road to paradise or to the broad road to the Hades. So, dearly beloved, salvation. It's not only it's not enough to take you to heaven, but by working on it, get the proper information that you need. That is where you will be able. Then that is what you said to them. Say you have come. I will read that one, and I'm going to teach you. If you hold on to the teachings, uh -huh. but if you fail to get the teachings, that's why my subject is the reason why. Is our problem of lack of knowledge also lack solution? Some people have re uh, relaxed. Why? They have been saved. And once they have been saved, it's forever saved. So that when somebody is ministering to you in the gospel, what gospel can do for you is what I have read for you. The gospel can give you salvation. Salvation is not enough to take you to heaven. You need to work on it. 
do things that will sustain it. Okay? I'll I'll come back with all the point. The reason why you need. Because I'll try to do this introduction for you so that whenever anybody is, is sharing the word of God with you, you know the type of the word that that person is sharing with you. So for God so love the word, anything that will pick your interest to come to Christ, that is what we call gospel. At times, God intentionally gives the evangelist the power gift to perform miracles. So if the word cannot win you, the miracle will win you. And that is what uh, it was happening to Jesus. When he was walking around, he said, somebody, let me read there, Luke chapter 13, 22 to 24. Then Jesus went through the town and village, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door, the door that I just showed to you. When you come, make every effort. Whatever you need to do, do it, do it and make sure you are walking through the narrow door. Because he said, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. It's not you alone that want to go to heaven, okay? So begin to understand God properly. So salvation, gospel produces salvation. And salvation is not what it's taking. It's not that you have received salvation, so you are going to heaven. But you need to maintain it. You need to retain it. You need to repair it or, or, or work out on it by getting the knowledge. It is only the information you receive that is what you use to work out on it. God bless you. I have a, a lot of things here. And I don't have to go beyond an hour. The second point is preaching of encouragement, popularly known as motivational preaching of giving the people of God hope and comfort. This ministration retain them to stay in the Lord. When you talk of preaching or the motivational preachers, as you have heard, they help believers that have come to God to continue to have trust in God and stay in God and stay throughout their life, stay as Christians in order not to shrink back Without this kind of motivational, encouraging preaching, so, so many believers will go back when they faced with trial, when they are tested, when they face temptation or testing, they will go back. Why? The message they got that they all had it in mind that they are coming to God so that everything will be okay for them. But when do you come, you have to go through some kind of trial, difficult life. Revelation chapter 2 verse 10 he said, Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will put some of, some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful to, even to the point of death. And without this kind of preachers here, so many people will go back. So the encouragers encourage the people of God to continue to trust God that Something good will come out from what they are going through. So it is part of Christian ministration and no one is supposed to condemn it. Let's see Hebrew, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 14, 19 to 28, quick. 14, 19 to 28. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium, Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Let me summarize here. As usual, Apostle Paul encountered opposition. 
he was stoned to death. And by the grace of God, he came back to life. He did not die. And when he did not die, he did not stop preaching. He gathered the people again. And he rather encouraging those that have been won. Why, what is that encouraging for? He said, they encourage them to remain true to the faith and explain to them that as Christian as we are, even though our Father is God Almighty, we must go through many hardship. You have to go through many hardship. So hardship is normal in Christianity. But so many believers, especially these ministers, are trying to turn it in Christianity from it. It looks as if when you become a believer, everything is supposed to be smooth or okay with you. And that is the lie. So here the scripture points that he encouraged them to remain true to the faith no matter what happened. And through the hardship, you enter through the narrow gate. The narrow door that people, everyone want to go through, they don't want to go through hardship, but they want to go through the narrow door. It, cannot be, it can never be possible. So the encouraging work here, when people don't know this, so you let them know. Even though the situation is at hand, they were even at the point of sympathizing with Apostle Paul himself. And he rather was rather encouraging them that that is how it is. All of us must go through. So as I'm going through today, you might not know what will happen to you, to you tomorrow. But stand firm. Don't let nothing or anything to shake you. Don't let anything to shake you. But try to hold on to your faith. So that is the encouraging. So dear beloved, the motivational preachers, their work is once a time or once a while when the, there is a situation. Maybe the church has lost a, a, a brother or a sister or somebody has lost a, a relative or somebody has been hit with a problem. When there is a situation, the meeting of believers is supposed to be teaching. But these kind of things happen and the encourager will have a work to do here. So it is not somebody's ministry that Every day he come to church. So that is what they do. Let's continue. Verse 23. Let me read 22. Uh, you must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They said, Paul and Barabbas appointed elders for them in each church. And with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord. In whom they had put their trust. So the people that they were, they went, they, they won over, they appointed elders for them to take care of the churches. Dearly beloved, right now so many things are changing in Christianity. In the Bible, the instruction Apostle Paul gave to Timothy and Titus. The elders who take care, who are in charge of every branch of the church are known as overseers. But now, locals are headed by pastors. So the pastors need money. So instead of the money that's supposed to remain in the church, for the church members, they need it around them, all of them to have their share. Since every local is headed by pastors, that is what they use to take care of the pastors. To leave the needy behind. So they appointed elders. They did not appoint peace pastors for them. They appointed elders for the church, local church. Now become a pastor and become a profession and business. So everyone, so they need to bring more so that every local will have a pastor. Let me move on. Some, somebody might not understand this. After going through Pisidia, they came into Pamphylia. And when they had preached the word in Perga, they went to, to the Atalia. From Atalia, they sailed back to Antioch where they had been 
committed to the grace of God for the work they have won completely. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. So that is how they were able to encourage them. Let me go a little back to chapter 11. Chapter 11 of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22. Chapter 11, verse 22 to 24. Chapter 11, 22 to 24. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barabbas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw that the grace of God had, and see what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their heart. The preaching of motivation is in the Bible. It, you motivate them or you encourage them to continue to stay in the church. Without these preachers, the people will shrink back. Some of them hear our message and they don't understand. They would rather go back to the world. While the message of teachings, as you be revealing the mystery, they will run away. So the encouragers, who are the preachers, are always around to explain things in the language they like it, so that they will stay in the church. So the purpose of preaching is to keep the people in the church. The purpose of evangelism or the gospel is to bring people in the church. The preaching is to keep people in the church. Why do you go to church? I hope I'm communicating. Okay. Encourage them to remain true to the Lord with all of their heart. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So, if you are following me with all the readings, it's talking about, the first one was talking about how people were able to come very close to God. When you accept Jesus Christ and you come to church, you have come very close to Him. How will you stay as long as you live in this world that the devil is still controlling? How can you survive with all the attack and problems here and there? That is where you need the motivator. The motivational preacher, the encourager. The one to encourage you, to comfort you. To keep you in the church. Dearly beloved, you guys love, love uh, motivational preachers so much. Why? Because they, they, they make you feel good. They make you feel that you still have God. God is for you. But where they are not telling you is that for God to be with you doesn't mean you are going to heaven. So the purpose of Christianity is for people of God to come to Christ to be prepared for his kingdom. So we have one song in our language, Yeriko Yeriba, Yenenida so Wosro. Alleluia, yene ni da so nina, ne se yesu beba befa, yena ko. Alleluia, yene ni da so nina, ne se yesu beba befa, yena ko. Yere ko, yere ba. Alleluia, yene ni da so. Also, hallelujah, and another so in a nesa is a baba befa in a come. Hallelujah, and another so in a is a is a baba befa in a As we are going and come back, we're going to church and we are coming home, we are doing the work of God and we are going and we are coming. 
All our hope is one day Christ will come and take her to heaven. That is the meaning of the sin. Is it not true? It's true. That is the reason why you are trying to continue to be a believer. So, if you gain all those messages that will retain you continue to be a believer, and you are short of the message, the last one, which is the teaching, that alone, that will take you to the kingdom of God. So who, what, what do you think you have done to yourself? You have caused yourself. Gospel has brought you. The preaching is keeping you. That is why you need the teachings that will send you to the narrow road, to the kingdom of God. So the teaching leads disciples into the truth. That lead them into the kingdom of God. Before I come to John chapter 8, let me read Proverbs chapter 6, chapter 6, 23 and 24. Proverbs 6, 23 and 24. For this, com for this command is a lamb. This teaching is a light. And correction and instruction are the way to life. The way to where? To life. Keeping you from your neighbor's wife, from the smooth talk of the wayward woman. The teachings is the light. What do we need light for? After six o'clock, every room you enter without light, you will hit your leg with, a, with an object. If you are driving, you don't have a light, you might not know where you are going, even though you know the route. Without light, no one can go anywhere in the night. So he said the teaching is the light. That The light is the most important thing to walk in darkness. And this word is the dark place, the darker, the darkest place. When God created this word, it was dark. So he prepared Eden for Adam and his wife. So when they disobeyed him, God drove them away into the dark place. So when Jesus came, he said, light has come into the world. But human people so love darkness instead of light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. So they don't want to come to the light for their deed to be exposed. Exposed. The, the world was in the darkness. And Christ came into the world with the light to shine in the, light, in the darkness. And the people ran away from the light to the darkness. Why? Because of their deed. So the teachings is the light. Light is the most important thing in walking in darkness. Without light, there's no way you can go anywhere. And in Christianity, what represents the light is the teachings, not preaching. Not prayer, not music. Somebody will organize musical concert on this big hotel. It will be full. Somebody will organize evangelism. The place will be full. Bible said this. Teaching. I've never, even when I came here, I had a lot of prayer line, prayer line, prayer line. There is no, none of them is teachings line, Bible teachings line, no. When they die, they go to hell. Why? Prayer is not the light. Song, music, they will sing and then you will dance and you will enjoy yourself. It's not the light. What represents the light for believers in the teaching? The light of the world in Jesus. The light of the world in Jesus. He's calling everyone to come and see the light. The light of the world in Jesus. So Jesus said, go and make disciples of all the nations everywhere. Whoever believes, baptize them. That means they have qualified to become a child of God. After that, teaching them to obey everything. Christianity is a religion of teachings. 
and the teaching is the problem. So here it's talking about the teaching is the light and also correction and instruction are the way to life. Keeping you, that teaching will keep you away from your neighbor's wife. If you don't have the teachings, you might not know the consequence of going to some of your neighbor's wife. So as long as physically you can protest yourself for the, that husband to see that you are sleeping with the wife, if you can find yourself, for example, the man and the woman, all of them were here, and the, the husband is here in Houston, and you, you know you know the woman here, and then you meet somebody, you meet her at Atlanta, and the husband is here, nobody know you there, you go to that woman. Why? Because you know nobody will see. But if you know the teaching, you will know that it is not a good thing to do. But if the teaching is not there, you even know, you know it is not good, but you might not know the consequence. So the, the other day I heard that a pastor was proposing to somebody's wife in the Pentecostal church. And then the one I heard they said, ah, it many. It, it said they are doing. They will not go for a married woman. When they go for a married woman, that woman will pretend or lie to him that I'm pregnant. And he will take all your money from you. So they like the married woman. After that was you are preventing yourself from, from your husband to see. I'm also preventing my wife to, for her to see. So that is what they want. So the pastors, they don't go. It is those who, do, who are not wise you to go for uh, unmarried women or ladies. But those who are clever, who are clever in this ty type of uh, pro uh, problem, they always go for the married one. Those that have married so that they will not exclude them. If you say you are, even if you are pregnant, it's your husband, not me, right? They will continue. And the husband will water it. Hey, you need a teaching to keep you away from this kind of attitude or action, okay? And he said, it turned you from the smooth talk of a wayward woman. There are so many people who are falling into this kind of woman. On Facebook, they will, honey, 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 how are you, honey? I don't have time coming here all the time, so please take my number and let let continue the chat from WhatsApp. And I also, do you know me from anywhere? What do you want to chat with me? We are here, let's chat. If you become friend, meaningful friend, but why do you want my number for what? If you want my number, if you listen to my message, you get my number. So you are not here for the message, you come for a purpose, evil purpose. Go out from it. But for other men, ah, they will take it. So when they go, when they go home, before they come, they have defiled themselves. They have disgraced, they have disgraced themselves. One of them, an elder, a high position elder here. When he returned from Ghana, two women reported him to the radio station. They have he had impregnated both of us. He has a wife here. It became a new. What will he do? Suspended. Degrees, shame, and we are here. Akwaba, a high position elder, impregnated two women at the same time, leaving your wife here. Why wow, he doesn't have the teaching? They have been receiving preaching every day, and the preaching let you know that even with all this, you are still a child of God. The teaching will open your understanding for you to know the consequence of this kind of life. Okay, so you need the teachings. If you want to go to heaven, it is the teaching that you need, not the preaching. But you guys have been used to the preaching and you don't have time for the teaching. So the preaching is what you 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Old. That one, that person can read only one Bible passage and will begin to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about it. We are not like that. We we set them point by point with the scripture support for you to know what you should know and should believe. That is why it takes time. When I started, some people were talking, brother, your, your teaching I like, but it's too, it too long ago. I said, ah, mama, at that time it was one hour. One hour is too long. Hey, mama, I can't go down. I have a lot of things to do. I cannot come here and deliver 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It's for the preachers that I'm a teacher. I am teaching. I am feeding people that want to go to heaven. You hear? So don't, somebody will come to Facebook and preach to you to motivate you, encourage you. 
after that, they will show you where you should go and donate. My time is running. I should have told you something. Those of you who are on Facebook seriously requesting for help. Some of you might be ashamed of yourself, but you don't know. Some preachers come. You don't know what they are telling you. After that, they show you where you should go and donate. And when you come to our message, you see us as a good person that you can get your, your, your problem solved with us. You have to begin, begin to become white believers, okay? Uh -huh. Let's go to James chapter 1 verse 21. The teaching, the importance of the teaching. Therefore, get rid of all moral faith and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Humbly. Humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Beloved, it is the word of God that can save you. It is your word that set me free. It is your word that set me free. It is your word, the written word. It is the word that set me free. Oh, it is the word, the written word. Is the word that set me free. The word planted in you which can save you. How do we plant the word? By the form of teaching. So you are planting, you are explaining it clearly. It takes more time. Dearly beloved, teachings always take more time. That is why Apostle Paul spoke throughout the whole day and night. Why? Teachings need more time. The reason why the churches, after 30 minutes, they will give you note or that is that everyone has been used to preaching. Give, it, give me some something. Even by the time you'll be teaching for over 30 minutes, some people will begin to sleep. Why? They want to dance. They come to church to dance and to give offering and go home. Let's go to Jesus' statement. What happened there? I'm reading the last Bible passage. John chapter 8, 30 to 36, and I will skip to 54 to 59. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, to my what? Teachings. When you come to God, all that you need is teaching. But the reason why we so lack this teaching is that you don't have interest. You have been used to what brought you to God. What brought you to God and what to retain you to God in God cannot take you to heaven. You need a teaching. The reason why Christ came is to come and look for people for his kingdom. He did not come to feed people here. He came to look for people for his kingdom. So if he will only do the miracle, prayer, and other things, he will get more of them, but he will lose all of them. Why? They will lack the information that they should put to have known. So Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. So if I can't hold on to your teachings, am I not your disciple? No. Who am I? You are a Christian. You are, you are just a believer. But you are not a disciple. Disciples are the people that are being taught with or by the word of God. If you are being taught by the word of God, that is what you call disciple. So he said, I'm going to teach you. If you hold on to that teaching, uh -huh, I can claim ownership of you. Then you know the truth. And that truth will set you free. It is the truth that set free. You will know the truth from getting, holding on to the teaching. And that truth will set you free, will send you to where you desire to go. They answered him, 
We are Abraham, Abraham descendant and have never been slave to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? You don't understand Jesus. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sin is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son set you free, you will be free indeed. Dearly beloved, <laughs> we have problem in Christianity. The people came to Christ. If Christ did not make any attempt to teach them, all of them will belong to him. But this short statement he made in verse 31 and 32 caused him to lose all of them. So there was some exchange here. And he was explaining, so the teaching began right from there. Let's continue from 54 to 59. Jesus replied, there were questions and answers. Because they thought they don't need the teaching before they can go to heaven. As long as they believe God, they are, they are the people of God. They don't need any type of teaching before they could go to heaven or they could go to the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ was saying, no, you can never go there unless you hold on to the teachings. So from that 31, this kind of exchange came all the way and Jesus is reply another question from them in verse 54. He was reply another question. So question, answer, question, answer. Let's see what happened. Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father whom you claim as your, as your God is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and obey his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my days. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, they said to him. And you have seen Abraham. Very truly I tell you. Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they pick up stone to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temp temple, guard, temple ground. Slipping away from the temple ground. So Jesus left all the people he gained with a miracle. He used to do the miracle because they're preaching, they will not listen to you. So with the miracles, they came to believe in him. They became his disciples and he was teaching them to confirm their discipleship. And it has caught to the point that if he did not run away, they could have killed him right there. What did he do? He tried to teach them. <laughs> right now, you believers, how do you describe these people? As for you, when you read, you know Jesus Christ wanted to help them. Right? <laughs> they got angry. They became very offended. He wanted to kill him. He said, made some statement they did not understand. Instead of them to become a white believer and so act because Jesus had more time for them. Whatever question, bring it. And he was responding. Another question came and he replied them. You are not yet 50 years. And you say you have seen Abraham. And he told them, oh, I tell you, before Abraham was there, I already there a long time. Ah. But your father in Joseph, who is about uh, 57 years, or maybe 92 years. And you say you saw Abraham. Do you, you know how many years Father Abraham lived? Please, what do you mean? That's why I like Nicodemus. The man was so humble and he has a lot of teachable attitude. With all the way Christ would try to drain him. He is so humble himself, wanted to know. But look at these people. These are the people we have them in the temples. 
all the temples have been filled with this temple, with these people. When you go there and you minister to them power free preaching, oh, hey, amen, hallelujah, glory be to the Lord, Father, preach on, hallelujah. When you begin to teach them, they will fight you. Why? Something wrong with their mind. That's why I said the problem, the reason, the problem of Christian lack of knowledge also lack solution. There's no way we can solve this problem. God has identified the problem with his people. What was that? They lack knowledge. Then why don't you give them knowledge? They don't care. They, they can't take it. Some people have introduced themselves. Look at what I read for you. As God has sent his people to come and teach his people, to give them the knowledge. Somebody say, I came to preach prosperity. He came to preach prosperity and he had got a lot of money. He came with another introduction. He, he introduced something different from what God had given to his people. That's what the people like. So if Jesus Christ was also like him, ah, he could have gone, he, Jesus Christ could have gained everybody. Because he had the power to raise even the dead. Somebody who had died for four days, he raised him back to life. So with this, those who need food, he'll provide. If you need help, he'll provide. Whatever you need, Christ had a solution. So he could have warned everybody from the Pharisees. Even they themselves could have been uh, warned over. That's why Nicodemus went to see him. He wanted to see him. Why? He also had problem, But he did not have a chance to, uh, to state his problem. When he came, he tried to flatter Christ, and he also tried to change the conversation. And on, 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 he could not even have time to tell Christ the reason why he came to visit him at that night. So dearly beloved, your reason, the reason this problem cannot be solved is the mentality of people that are known as Christian. They don't like their teaching. The reason why so many people have even stopped listening to my message, they are angry. Why? It, it's too long. Some of them one hour, 30 minutes, some of them two hours, some of them almost two hours. They don't know. Somebody will tell me, how can I listen? To? I gave him a message. He asked a question and I explained the explanation to get 30 minutes. He asked me, how can he listen to 30 minute message? I said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Who? He asked me, how can he have time to listen to 30 minutes message, respond to his question. And I said, I'm sorry, you. Question. One question. The question that he asked seven, in that Acts chapter seven, he took the whole chapter. The whole chapter. One question. Teachers don't have short message. This is the reason why teachers, you don't have short message for anybody. I tried to do it like 40, 30, no, by the time 30 minutes, you are saying introduction. By 30 minutes, you are still doing introduction to open the people's mind for what you are coming to feed them. Why? Because you are planting. Planting is different from scattering. Preaching is scattering. You scatter the seed. You throw them out. Whatever it will go. That's why some of them, it went to the, the stone. Some of them went to the fence. Some of them went to the guy. Grass, some of them went to the iron, whatever that is go, well, as you throw it, whatever it go, it go. But the plant, you dig down, you put it there, and you cover it, so it take time. Throw it, you throw. But plant, you would have to you need to dig down on the ground, bring the dust out, put the seed, cover it. It take time. By the time you finish digging the, the, the ground, the one who is throwing has already finished the, the full um, and you are still digging. So, beloved, that is why teachings take more time. As from this time, teachings is the only one among the word ministration that has the power to take you to heaven. That is why people don't have interest in it. May God help you. May God bless you to have interest in the teaching. That alone will help you. My name is Paul Enchi. The number you can reach me, 832-805-29. One, two. I'll come your way next week if God permit to continue. Bye-bye.